Hi, I'm Simone from Tomorrow's Forest and we've decided to do a roundup of the biodegradable tree shelters that are available on the market in 2022. <laughs> we have the name Next Gen, which is the next generation within the company, within the family. So, um, <laughs> Gary has been working on this project for about four years, looking at all manner of materials that he can possibly use to make a biodegradable tree shelter. So the concept of the tree shelter is exactly the same. So, you know, it, it does a great job, it protects from oversight, it protects from animals browsing, it increases the amount of growth, reduces side branches, does all the things that the standard one does. But, Gary's concept was it must be 100% biodegradable. All elements, including the tie, which is one that is a bit of a challenge for a lot of people. So, after looking at many different materials, things like chemical fiber, Gary came up with wool. Now, Gary's wife is from Wales. He saw a lot of sheep and talked to sheep farmers who basically didn't know what to do with their wool. There's a waste product that was more to shear the sheep than it did to, that they could get in revenue from the wall. So this is our base, this is our substrate, this is the base material. Okay? So we inject that with a resin and the resin is made from cashew nut shell liquid and pasture. Now cashew nut shells again is a waste product. So they grow the cashews, they want the nuts, the, the shells themselves uh, again, it's a waste product. What they do is they crush the shells, heat them, and what comes out is a, it looks like treacle. Um, so you get this treacle out, and then the treacle is refined and produces the, the resin mixed with cash, uh, castor oil, and that's the resin that we use. There's a little bit of an additional material in there as well, which we don't disclose. That's our IP, but that's the part of the material that makes it set. Okay? So everything in this tube is 100% biodegradable um, and it's designed to last a minimum of five years. Now, when we started talking to organisations like Wood and Trust, National Trust, Forestry Commission, people like that, um, they all love the concept, they love the wool content, they love the fact that it's you know, going to biodegrade. They love, I mean, if you look at this tube, for example, that's one that's been on site for two years. Um, and that's, you can see, it's starting to get this green light growing on it. Um, it's, they, they love the concept, but they said, if we're going to pay more for a biodegradable tree shelter, we have to be sure it's going to work. This is public funds we're using. So, we went away and looked at this. Um, we were convinced that it would do its job and it would last for a minimum of five years, which is what they were asking for. Um, Gary did was talk to some of his contacts, um, Lloyds of London, a division of Lloyds of London, looked at this, they looked at all the technical information behind it, and they said, yes, we agree with you, we think this is a good, a, a, a good product for us to warranty. And so it's costing us, it's costing us a little bit of money to create this warranty, but now, what you get if you buy next gen is a product that's 100% biodegradable. Everything, including the ties, including the strapping that goes around it, including the bags, all biodegradable. And it's guaranteed to last a minimum of five years. Now, what that guarantee covers is the actual material itself. It doesn't include things like the stake. Uh, doesn't include uh, if somebody goes through with a strimmer and cuts the bottom or something. But the material itself, if that material were to start to break down within five years and expose the tree to potential damage from browsing or whatever, the warranty would kick in. And what the warranty says is, if that happens, we will replace the tube, of course, which anyone would have to do under the Consumer Rights Act anyway, if it failed to do its job, but we would replace the tube, we would give the customer the money to buy another tree if they needed one, if the tree had been damaged, but most importantly, we would cover the cost 
cost of the labour to go back onto site and to put the damage right. Now, clearly, we don't think that's going to happen. Um, but if it did, completely covered. So people like Woodland Trust, National Trust, these public funds, they are safe in the knowledge that this product is going to do what it's supposed to do. What, what are your um, cable ties with? What are they're, the they're metal. Yeah. Um, and yet now, once you can see on the art, they start. Now, I don't know if you can get the camera around here. They started out looking like this. Now, th these are the, the sort of uh, ties you get on a potato sack. Now, that was our first idea because we didn't want to use plastic zip ties. We wanted to use something that was degradable. Yeah. This is just steel and it's going to rust after about five years and fall to the ground. It won't do any harm. But this would require um, a separate tool to do twisting. And we wanted to try and get away with that, or get away from that if we could. Also, another downside to this is it's really difficult to get it off if you want to do any beat up. So you would have ended up cutting it off. So Gary's come up with this, which is a different design, which basically just opens up. Sorry, I'm gonna put that here. So literally, you can open this up. Yes. Like that. And you can do it up again, you just basically put it through this slot. But mm -hmm. essentially, that's how it will work, and you can take it off and put it back on them. Uh, and that breaks down as well, does it? Or do you exactly. remember this? Exactly, it's yeah, going to rust into the soil. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really nice story, especially the, using the British wool and uh, yeah. in a, yeah, a, yeah. a, a, a recycling. Sort of Everybody like, loves the idea. Imagine just now um, that, that you're looking at getting a standard, so obviously there's no standardised kind of um, uh, spec for, for biodegradable tree tubes. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah, we think to have a standard is really important because if people like, if we're going to ask the Forestry Commission to give us extra money or give customers extra money to use a biodegradable tree shelter, then they, they need to be sure it's going to work. I mean, we've got our warranty, which is one thing, but we think going forward it needs to be a standard that perhaps could apply to other tubes as well as ours. So we've commissioned a company in Scotland called Impact Solutions to, create, to, to test our product and to create a standard from that testing process. So we're going to be looking into things like, will it last a minimum of five years? What about the light transmission? What about the materials that are in there? Is there any toxicity? Or will it change the pH or anything like that? And how will it degrade? So we've employed this company to do that. And the process will take about 18 months. We started it in May. So by next November, the process should then be complete. And what they'll create for us is, I don't know whether it'll be a BS number or whether it'll be an EN number, we're not quite sure yet, but there will be a standard that can be applied to biodegradable tree shelters that will give the buyer the confidence to know it must meet these, these, these criteria if you're going to call it a biodegradable tree shelter. That's a really good idea and it will drive the whole industry sort of with that, so. make it more reliable and yeah, people, yeah. people will have more, more confidence in, in the tree shelter. I think so. And, and I say we're, we're, we're open, other, other people will be able to put their products forward for testing um, and to, to apply to the same standard. We're all good. We're all pulling in that direction. Hi, I'm here with Ed from AgroVista and um, they are the suppliers of the new tree hugger um, biodegradable tree guards which are just here and also the WhipTech bio no, that's not down there. Um, hedge guards, which we'll talk about as well. So, first of all, tell me about the um, the uh, tree hugger guards and um, yeah. So, how, tree how hugger guards are made of organic cotton substrate, which is sourced in the global organic textile standards. So, it's completely organic as it comes from a plant. You can see here, if you can zoom on the camera, you've got little specks. So there's no chemical process involved in the production of this, and it's combined with a pine rosin as opposed to a resin, which is more organic as a standard. It's a woven material which gives it its strength as it's produced. What it'll do, pine rosin, cotton, fully biodegradable materials, fully sustainable. Optimal light transparency, and it's breathable as well. What it'll do, because it's malleable, it'll work with the tree as it grows and it conditions it to the environment which is planted. And it'll last five years and begin to biodegrade after that. Brilliant, and it, it just breaks down naturally and over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. organic cotton and pine rosin, which comes from trees, which is FSC certified, will biodegrade, 100% sustainable, 100% biodegradable. Perfect, and they come in a range of heights, I presume, sort of. Yeah, you've got nests of five in diameter 70 mil up to 110 mil, 1.2 meter height, and a 60 centimeter height. 
we do two different tie options. We understand that planters want convenience in terms of installation. So we do a really good releasable tie. So you can adjust the guard or you can do a metal tie which is degradable as well. Okay, these ones here are um, the Wiptec Bio hedge guards. So yeah, Wiptec Bio, like so we've got a 600 mil option which can be used for tree guards or for hedge guards. Um, made in the UK, UK source recycled materials of pulp with a natural additive added into it as a blend, which gives us a waterproofing agent. It'll last three to four years. It's got soil association, soil association accreditation as it biodegrades. They come flat packed, so you can get a high volume per pallet. What we're really proud of with both of these guards is we've got a number of depots across the UK that we can distribute really easy in our electric vehicles as well. We want to do this in the best way possible and reduce any form of carbon footprint. So we're really proud to have two guards made in the UK and reduce any form of carbon footprint and climate change to do this in the best way possible. And they're really lightweight, aren't they? So they're yeah, absolutely. You can fit yeah. 9,600 of the 500 millimeter guard per pallet and 7,500 of the 600 millimeter. Yeah. So really high volumes and a really good way of doing it. Yeah. And you've got a really interesting board on the front. Which is yeah, absolutely. So WhipTech the... Bio has got the most real-time data of any guard in the industry as it degrades. Yeah. So this is real-time data in this trial lasting four and a half years and the guard is doing exactly as it should. So as it's in contact with the ground, it's degrading from the bottom and the guard will just slide down the cane. As it's protecting the whip, the whip will grow. That's exactly what it says. So I'm here with David from Hitex um, and they've developed a new biodegradable tree tube and he's going to explain to us a little bit about the history of why you started working on these and um, what it's made of and the benefits. It's quite different from some of the other ones we've seen so um, we're quite intrigued to find out more. Okay, yeah. So. Eco Haven was basically uh, an idea in my mind two years ago. Um, we are, as a family business, we specialise in biodegradable solutions for construction and landscaping. And a lot of that is to do with silt management and erosion control. And it was while we were doing an R&D project to develop a silt pocket that I realised that by putting the post in the material, if you looped it round, it became a tube, it looked like a tree guard. So thanks for um, many years of dealing with lots of manufacturers in that industry, we uh, identified a resin that we're using for a biodegradable peg and realised that that could be extruded and used to make the tree guard material. Um, we focused on the design throughout to make it sure that the environmental potentials are the best that they can be. So what, what are the tubes made from? So they are derived from sugar cane, which is already um, industry converted it into bioethanol and the byproduct of bioethanol industry produces a biopolymer that we're using once we add a special ingredient to make it fully biodegradable in yeah. situ in the field. And you said you said to me just now there's some benefits of using um, sugar cane in terms of sort of carbon storage. Yeah basically because sugar cane is a very efficient sequester of CO2 um, from field to delivery to your door, taking into consideration all of the manufacturing transport implications. One tonne of uh, the Eco Haven tree guards traps two tonnes of CO2. So, okay, so not even carbon negative, it's ca oh, carbon yeah, neutral yeah. is carbon negative. Yeah, so that, that's partly because the sugar cane's trapped it in, in its fibres and, then, and yeah. then it's stored in the, in the, um, the, the material. Um, and how long will these, these ones last before they start biodegrading? Yeah, certainly. So the biodegradable expectation of life is uh, five to ten years. And the, the design of these is quite different from some of the other ones. Should we come, come around yep. here? We've got one here to show us. Yeah, so certainly. these come flat. So we, 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 um, we started with a blank piece of paper when we came up with our design. And we went for the flat pack initially to basically make transport as efficient as possible but the, the much more positive feedback benefit is also it makes it much easier for people to handle, transport and store when they've got them there. Um, the, whole, the, the tube then is basically formed by basically there's three tabs on the side with slots on the other edge and these basically just slide in together and lock in place. And there's the finished tube. And you've got, you were showing me just now, you've got an integrated cable yeah, tie, haven't certainly. you? So the, the, bio, the cable tie that so, goes onto the stake. Correct, so on, on the tubes there are actually the, 
cable ties you said that are integrated, these just tear off and then can be threaded through yeah. the, the tube. And they the break tie. down at the same time. They break down, all made of the same material, so not using the nylon ties that a lot of other people are using at the yeah, moment. Yeah. Quite different. But you, you said for these ones they'll, they'll break down from the ground up, so the bit that's in contact with the ground. Correct, yeah. Will, so basically, the, 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 the biodegradable side of it it's the exposure to the bacteria that's in the soil. But then, they, although they're not a plastic, they have common ancestry with plastics in terms that they will uh, UV weather over time. So we, we can control that UV life, but it then means that after seven years it will start to become brittle and crumb, unlike conventional plastics where it just sits in the ground as a microplastic, as soon as it's exposed to the, the bacteria they'll digest it. Yeah. Brilliant. And you, you said to me just now that um, you do them in a couple of heights at the moment. Yeah, so we've, whether it's a clever idea or not, we've only gone for two heights, a 60 centimetre and a 90 centimetre. Yeah. But they're designed to be modular so they're linked together. So then you can combine them to produce a 1.2, a 1.5 and a 1.8 as well. And then they come in two different diameters. 10 centimetre and 15 centimetres for trees and shrubs. Yeah, and you've gone for brown, which is, is a quite unusual choice in terms of colour. They're, they're okay with light transmission? Yeah, there's, there's two stuff. reasons we went for the brown. Um, one, I'm also very mindful of the, the visual impacts on the environment and the, the public awareness of them. Mm -hmm. I find the brown a, a much more visually pleasing image, but also the light properties of the brown, although it filters out some of the light spectrum uh, some of the light spectrum the trees need, it still allows a lot to pass through into the tube, which dev, but then it's reflected back and forth within the tube, so it's far more efficient use of that light, whereas with a green tube you tend to find the light just passes straight through. Yeah. And then you've got ventilation coverage. Yeah, so again with the UK climate increasing in temperature, we've added ventilation holes and they in the conversations we've had with people at the show today, that's something that everyone feels is needed for the future. Brilliant. They sound absolutely fantastic. Thanks very much for okay. uh, introducing us. Thank you. So I hope you found that interesting. We thought it was absolutely fascinating talking to all the different vendors and manufacturers. Um, let us know which tree shelter is your favourite and what you think about all the different options. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.